you've been talking about normal strains and its relationship to normal stresses, let's now take a look at shear strains and its relationship to the shear stress. I'll go back to a two-dimensional view of my little chunk of material and I look at the effect of the shear on it, so I haven't drawn the, the normal stresses here. And so I have tau xy and this is tau yx and I know that you know tau xy has to be equal to tau yx. And this shear, you know, it's going to cause the the material to the, the element to skew and you're going to get something like this. So due to this shear you can, you know, this corner is going to move here and I'm neglecting the effect of the the normal um, stresses here, okay? Which means that this angle gets, you know, um, is, is changed by some amount lambda. Similarly, you will get skewing in, you know, of this because this corner can move in this direction due to this shear compared to, to this corner. And you're going to get the skewing, and the measure of that skewing is this angle theta. And the shear strain is defined as um, the, you know, you add up these two angles, so theta plus lambda. In fact, that's the engineering shear strain. There are two definitions for shear strain. And if you add up theta and lambda, that gives us the engineering shear strain that's denoted as gamma. There is also a tensorial shear strain that's denoted as eps by epsilon, um, and that's gamma xy divided by two, because in the tensorial shear strain, you take the average of this change in angle. And you can relate the shear strain to the shear stress in a linear way, analogous to what we did for the normal strain and the normal stress, and the constant of proportionality is G, which is called the shear modulus, okay? It's analogous to Young's modulus for, for the normal strains and stresses. And for small strains, uh, from geometric considerations, uh, and for isotropic material, one can show that G is related to the Young's modulus and Poisson ratio. And so when we, you know, when we're doing the bike crank and the uh, bolted fl flange examples and answers, we will need to enter only the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, and we won't need to enter a shear modulus because that can be deduced from those two con uh, material properties. So now we can put, you know, we can look at the 2D version of Hooke's law um, with considering both normal and shear components and then extend that, you know, look at how, what it looks like when you extend it to 3D. That's coming up next.